Hey guys, Coach Adam from TeamElitePhysique.com with another pro bikini breakdown. We had a good one this weekend. Jordan jumped into the show last minute and ended up winning the San Antonio Pro getting to the Olympia. No surprises there. Is she going to be jumping into more shows and be an Olympia blocker? Time will tell. But this weekend, we also have a battle of Rayana versus DeRaja. Uh, DeRaja, remember, she just got into the Olympia by beating Jessica by one point. Um, now, Jessica is not a top competitor yet, but she definitely is on a trajectory to be a top competitor. Now, can DeRaja beat Rihanna considering she just beat Jessica by one point only? This is going to be a prime situation for Rihanna to beat DeRaja, and how does she do it? Now, going back to Jessica, Jessica is also competing this weekend at a show. Is this the show that she gets into the Olympia? Is that going to be possible for her? Let's take a closer look at that. So let's go ahead and jump into the breakdown for this week. So first, let's jump into the San Antonio Pro and dissect why Jordan finished with the perfect score, beating second place Yulia uh, at the San Antonio. So going into the show, Jordan was not on the competitor list. So sometimes competitors will be in good shape. Maybe they'll be, you know, 95% there. Um, you know, looking at targeting maybe a show in a week or two, but then a show list will come out and there'll be no heavy hitters on it. It'll come out on a Monday or a Tuesday and you'll see a competitor jump into that show. Um, and that is a strategic thing. That is pro sports and I am all for it. I think that it makes it more exciting, more fun. Um, you know, and you're going to see that happen from time to time. So bikini competitors who are out there, if you're up and coming and you see a, a show list and you're on a show list and you realize that there's no heavy hitters on it, do not be surprised if someone like Jordan shows up on Friday to check-ins to, to ruin your day. That is just part of the game. You're playing professional sports, no complaints in professional sports. Now, looking at um, why Jordan won in this show, now it's, it was surprising to me to see Jordan um, kind of jump into the show last minute because I don't think she really was out of shape. I don't think she looked two weeks out to me. She looked pretty much right on point. Um, you know, so I don't know if she just entered late or saw the list came out and decided to jump in late. I'm not positive. Um, to me, it looks like she's pretty much on point. She doesn't really need to make any changes in terms of her conditioning uh, come Olympia time. This was really close to where she needs to be. Maybe a tiny bit tighter for an Olympia level conditioning, but nothing too far away. So um, maybe she was targeting this show and wanted to make it like a last minute thing uh, and, and to, to decide. I don't know. But she won with a perfect score. She got to Olympia, got the job done. That's all she needed to do. Now, looking at the two of them, one of the reasons Jordan is so good is because of her structure. Her stru Structurally, she's hard to beat. There's very few people out there in the world that have a structure like her. Even in pro bikini, there's probably 20 girls that can hang with her in the whole world that have a structure similar to her. She's got great structure. She's got a small waistline. She's got round muscle bellies. Um, you know, she really has the makings of that, you know, that structural elite in bikini, that, the, the nice flow. So looking at her, wide shoulders, great lat tiny waistline conditioning is on point great glute profile shot you know the one thing i would love to see is a little bit more roundness out of her hamstrings from that front pose but honestly that's just me nitpicking here she looks great there's probably no judge is going to tell her you need more roundness out of your front pose in the in the in the hamstring um she looks really good really round and bubbly uh, a, the tiniest bit tighter for the Olympia, and honestly, she's already there. So, um, But you see her shoulders, they're already really sharp. There's really not much conditioning on the upper body that needs to happen at all, maybe just a little bit in the legs. One of the things that did stand out to me was her suit choice. I don't think that there's, it's very contrasty. I don't see it pop very much. So a different color suit I think would be helpful, but really that's, that's pretty much it. Everything else is, is exactly where it needs to be. She's an experienced competitor. So I, you know, you're going to see that you're going to see her not making very many mistakes. Um, yeah, so there's really nothing here that I would pick up. I mean, she does have one little thing that is it's kind of just a little distracting to me. She has this like butterfly ring jewelry, which, you know, I'm nitpicking again, but we're talking about you know, top level competitors, the little things like jewelry does matter. To me, I'd go with something more basic, um, but we're talking, you know, nitpicking here. Now, why does she be Ilulia? And I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong, um, if with a perfect score. Well, again, you got to remember her history, Ilulia's history. I'm going to stop saying her name. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong every single time. I'm going to stop saying her name, but you got to remember her history. This is the highest she's ever placed. Looking at her history, in 2022, she got 13th, 15th, 18th, 10th, and 14th. So not a single top five placing. But in 2023, let's look at the difference. She's made improvements. She's gone 8th, 6th, 6th, and now 2nd. So she is making improvements, and I think that that's awesome to see. And it's awesome for all of you competitors out there who are trying to climb up the ranks. Know that, you know what? Most likely the first year is not going to be a banger as a, as a pro. 
probably most likely not even the second year. It's probably going to take you three years to get in to really start seeing the results for most people. You know, not everyone's going to be a Diraja and come out and win her first show. It's, it's, it's a very rare thing to happen. It takes time to, to get your pro card. And then once you get your pro card, now you're dealing with the structural elite. You know, you have to deal with the, the, the top competitors out there. When you win an NPC show, you got to be really good, right? When you win nationals, you have to be really, really good and have a good structure. When you get to the pro level, you got to have a crazy good structure going against all the girls who have good structures and be better than them. And when we're talking Olympia level, we're talking structural elite, muscle bellies, pretty muscle. I mean, there's a lot of genetic components to this and it's going to take you time to build to that level. And some of you, unfortunately, are never going to be, be able to even build to that level just because genetically you're just not that structure. Now, I don't think that's the case for her. I think that she has a genetic structure um, to be a good competitor, but she's making some mistakes, and let's go over those mistakes right now. So when we look at the overall density of the muscle, look at let's look at Jordan and let's look at this leg here. You know, I do think her conditioning on her legs is a, could be will be a literally a, a hair tighter at the Olympia, but nothing crazy. But let's look at the graininess of Eulia. And look at the separation and detail and just the, the overall texture of the muscle and how grainy it is. It is not that soft, pretty muscle that we're wanting to look at. You know, it's, it's what the judges are looking for. It is a harder, more dense muscle crossing right into that, that like figure conditioning on the legs. Maybe even not quite women's physique, but that figure conditioning where it's harder, a little more grainy. And even in, even in figure, they don't want it to be super grainy. But she is getting to that point where you're seeing that kind of that orange peel uh, looking leg where you're seeing all the kind of density and fiber of the muscles where the, when she walks, you're seeing all that flickering of the muscle fibers. It's just a little bit too much density and conditioning and hardness for bikini. Remember, bikini is that soft, pretty muscle we talk about. And Jordan, if you look here, it's full, it's round, it's soft, it's pretty. And you look at Yulia, it's hard, it's dense, it's grainy, it's really detailed, right? So just a little bit too far on the conditioning, actually not a little bit too far, probably a lot, a lot too far on the conditioning. I would have probably pulled her back a couple of weeks ago on conditioning for, for her to be competitive against, especially against someone um, like Jordan, but they didn't know Jordan was going into it. But that's what's winning the shows these days is a softer, fuller look. It's a rounder, fuller look. So basically they're taking this conditioning level and just softening it up a little bit and filling it out as much as they can, right? But let's go ahead and look at them from the back. Now, from the back, you can really see the difference in the conditioning and you can really see the difference in the overall shape. You know, Jordan, again, when we talk about structural differences and structural potential of maximizing, you know, a, a physique, Jordan is really close to doing it. I mean, look at this waistline and V-taper on Jordan. Crazy waistline. Now, remember, we talk about this often with her hair being, you know, shorter you can really see the lower back. And when you see that lower back, the glutes look even more 3D. You know, the glutes look even farther out, right? It makes her waistline look even smaller. That comes from, you know, being able to see her lower back so her hair is not like, you know, on top of her glutes. I always say, you know, cut your hair a little bit shorter where you can see the lower back so you can have that 3D illusion. Uh, with her having her hair so short, she has to be careful with how much muscle she has in her back. It can't be too detailed because you could see the full back. So you can have short hair in bikini, but you do have to be careful with having too much muscle in the back, right? You can't be, you know, once you expose it, the judges have to judge it. They're going to see it. But she's doing a good job. She's still keeping that soft, pretty muscle. It's not overly detailed in the back. So that's something to be aware of when you're having short hair. Now, with the small, with the small waistline and the 3D pop-out glutes, um, the hourglass shape is just really maximized and emphasized here. And, and structurally, there's just no one at the talent level of Jordan to compete with her. She's in really good condition. And actually looking at her from the back, I would say she probably doesn't need to get much tighter for the Olympia. Actually, this is pretty much where she needs to be for the Olympia. I don't think she can get much tighter. Otherwise, she's going to start separating too much in the hamstrings and it's going to be too much. Um, this is pretty much pretty close to where she needs to be for the Olympia. You know, I, I, I don't think that she would have got any feedback back from the judges besides maybe the front of the leg needs to be a little bit tighter, but that could just be a posing issue when you're already this tight from the back. I wouldn't sacrifice getting tighter from the back or, or I wouldn't sacrifice yeah, getting tighter from the back to just get a little bit tighter from the front because you're going to be more judged on the back. So if you're going to err, err on the side of the back being the right condition versus the front. It's usually a, a smarter bet. Now, 
Um, looking at her from the back, though, again, the shape is just really, really good. Um, good lines without too much detail. She's at the limits here in the hamstrings with how much separation is there. But today's bikini, you know, the girls are a lot more muscular. They have a lot of tie-ins, and you're just going to see some more of that separation. It just comes with building more muscle. Now, she's got a little bit of that detail, but nothing crazy. But when we look over at Yulia, uh, we look at, we, we're seeing these piano string hamstrings, right? The piano string, piano cord hamstrings, right? All the way down, you're seeing hamstring separation in detail. You're even seeing separation in the glute. Look at that glute tie-in. That's a full detail separation line, right? We don't want to see separation lines in the glute. We definitely don't want to see them in the tie-in area. She is just too lean. Now, her shape and her size would be greatly maximized if she just was a little bit softer. If she added a couple pounds of body fat, for her, maybe even like three pounds, four pounds of body fat, that would make her that much better. And I think that's the reason she's not doing as well on the pro level is that she's missing her condition. She's overshooting, which is not what she needs to do. So what I would say is, is start paying attention a little bit closer to who's winning, how they're looking. Stop overshooting on the conditioning. Stop thinking that's what you need to do to win because no one winning in the American market looks like that occasionally overseas you're going to get you know a judge that isn't f as familiar as like an, the american judges or what's the the criteria is because there's less shows judged over there maybe an american judge couldn't get out there they just had the best judge of their place out there and they're picking a little bit harder but that is not the criteria of what's winning look at the top 10 in the olympia those girls are not strided in the hamstrings are not winning if you look at the if you look at 10 shows overseas in europe you might get four girls that are crazy shredded out of those 10 shows could just be who showed up that day, could be the judging, could be, you know, they had no other option besides to pick someone because that was still the best girl that day. Doesn't mean that's what's going to win in the American market. We talked about Valeria last week. Too tight for the American market, couldn't get, you know, a top three placing, but overseas with that same level of conditioning wins a show, right? It's who there is to pick from at that show. That's what they have to go with. The lines of her are, are amazing. I'll, get, I'll admit it. She'd be hard not to pick because her lines are so good, even if she is a little bit more conditioned, but that is not the standard. So that's where she's hurting. And also it's hurting her overall fullness. So it's hurting her glute fullness. It's hurting her hamstring roundness. It's hurting her overall size. Because if you have a little bit more fat, you have more size. You're going to be bigger because there's more tissue on you. So when you get next to a Jordan who's, who's jacked, you know, you get next to a Phoebe who's jacked. If you're shredded lean, and they're a little bit softer, of course they're going to be bigger than you, not just because of the muscle, but the fat is also helping that illusion be bigger. So now you're not just smaller in muscle, but you're smaller in fat, another layer of size. So you're really looking small next to someone like her. So what I would say as a recommendation to her, I would say, hey, you know what? This second placing, it, I don't want it to be a fluke for you. And I do think it could be a fluke for you if you bring this level of conditioning to your next show and to your next show. You're going to need the right situation again to get into that second place, like, like this show, which didn't have any heavy hitters. You know, this show was underwhelming in terms of the competitors that were in the show. There was no, you know, top Olympians. There was no top competitors in this show. Um, so you're going to need to be in a show like that in order to place this high again if you're bringing this type of conditioning. So this should be a good learning lesson for her being next to Jordan and being like, man, she's softer, fuller. Like, this is what I need to be doing if I want to win. So this should be some good insight for how she comes into her prep. Now, the other awesome thing that's going to be happening this weekend is we have Jessica competing again, and she's in a show right now where there's no heavy hitters. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So looking at the Daytona Pro List, Jessica would be my favorite to win this show going into the weekend based on who's on the list right now. There's no big heavy hitters on the list, and this is based on her pushing Daraja the other day and only losing to her by one point. So is someone going to jump on the list? You know, I would think that Jordan could potentially jump on this and be an Olympia blocker for the show. We have 47 girls in the Olympia. I am all four blockers being there at this point. We got almost 50 competitors in there. We still got a couple weeks to go to, to, for the list. I don't want to be at the Olympia watching 90-second posing routines at 50 girls, right? You don't want to be at the Olympia getting bored watching 90 minutes of posing routines before the actual show. Uh, the Olympia, it should be hard to get to. It should be prestigious. You know, the, the more competitors that get there, the easier the route is, the less prestigious it is. So I am all for blockers jumping in. I would love it if Jordan jumped in after this weekend and get another win, get some momentum going into the Olympia. Hopefully she'll see this and say, you know what? Adam's right. I'm going to jump in the show. I'm going to be a blocker. <laughs> so with that being said, um, Jessica would be the favorite going into this. Remember, she just lost to, to Daraja by one point. Now, I will say Daraja was a little bit off on that show. She was a little bit soft in the core. She was a, she was a lot soft in the glutes. 
Um, she's had a couple weeks to tighten it up, and she's going to need it because she's going up against Rihanna. Now, Rihanna, I don't know if she planned this strategically or not to go against Daraja, but Rihanna is no Jessica. Rihanna is a high-level competitor. I think that she has a very good chance of getting into the top 10 this year. I'd probably put her in the rankings of somewhere between 8th and 14th at this year's Olympia. She is not going to be someone who is easy to beat as Jessica. And I would say Jessica wasn't easy to beat. She only beat her by one point. So Daraja going into this weekend show better bring a better conditioning because you don't want to go into the Olympia a couple of weeks losing to someone because it kind of sets a precedent, even though last year it didn't when she because Phoebe beat her and then she beat Phoebe. It does. It is a, something that sits in the back of the judge's head. You know, if you're getting beat by someone all year long, and then you're like, man, didn't we just give a win to this girl? And it's close. You kind of, it's just naturally in your head. You, oh yeah, well she beats she she beats her every time they run into each other. So we'll just give it to her again. It's not. I can't really decide. It's so close. So it, it makes sense. She's always beating her. The most of the judges think that she's always beating her because she's always winning against her. So let's just go with that. It's a safe pick, right? So Daraja, I think she'll be bringing it. This happened last time too, where she was. A little bit off. She lost to Phoebe, and then she came to Olympia a lot tighter. Um, and in two weeks' time, to, two weeks' time to Daraja is a lot different than two weeks' time to a lot of other people. Two weeks' time to Daraja could be a totally different person. So, what did she do? Did Daraja take her foot off the gas and uh, is a little bit even softer now, or bringing the same package and is really going to put her foot on the gas when it comes time to Olympia and and you know the last three weeks before the Olympia prep? Or did Daraja already stick her foot on the gas and said, okay, you know what? I need to get tighter. I want to show them how good I'm going to be at the Olympia and wow everyone this weekend. And I'm going to win with a perfect score over a high-level competitor like Rihanna because that one-point stuff is not happening again. <laughs> so knowing Daraja, I think she has more of that mentality than the other. So I'm thinking that she's going to be a pretty tough competitor to beat. It might be a lights-out situation, perfect score, um, because that's what she did at the last time when Phoebe beat her. She said, uh-uh. That is not going to happen again. I'm going pedal to the metal, and I'm going to fully bring it this time. I have a new thing that I'm doing for the viewers of this channel. As a thank you guys so much for viewing, I'm going to be giving you a new competition suit from Angels Competition Bikinis in many of my videos that I'll be putting out. So how do you get the competition suit? Well, what I want you to do is to take a clip from this video, reformat it, do whatever you want to do to the clip, like it, hate it, whatever. Put it on your Instagram, tag me in the video, and also mention this channel, youtube.com forward slash Team Elite Physique. The winners that I'll be selecting will be getting a competition suit. We'll be doing that about once a month to twice a month here. And so I want you guys to be getting the benefits of it, using that as a way to grow it as well and get the word out. We want everyone to learn more about bikini and get the details that they need. So thank you guys so much for the support. As always, TeamElitePhysique.com for worldwide online contest prep with us. Thank you guys so much.